Unlike native C or C++ applications, .NET isolates developers from the application memory, taking care of creating and destroying objects. When your application executes, the .NET execution engine allocates two chunks of memory called the small object heap for objects less than 85k and the large object heap for objects greater than or equal to 85k. Whenever you use the new keyword in your code, the object you are creating is allocated onto one of the heaps based on its size. .NET adds objects of less than 85k to the small object heap. It's a contiguous heap in that all the objects are allocated sequentially and .NET maintains a pointer called the next object pointer that indicates where the next object in the sequence should be allocated. As well as allocating objects, .NET will also keep track of objects that are no longer used. If an object is in use by the application, there will be references to it on the stack, from global objects, statics, and even within the CPU registers. Objects that don't have a reference can never be accessed and are of no further use to the application, and they will be garbage collected at some point. We'll discuss that later on. So, let's have a look at what goes on under the hood of the small object heap. On the slide, you can see the small object heap and the next object pointer, which is placed at the beginning of the heap when the application starts. We've also got a stack that is used to hold object references created during function calls. When object A is created, it's allocated onto the heap at the location pointed to by the next object pointer. A reference is placed on the stack, and the next object pointer is incremented by the size of the object. When object B is allocated, the process is repeated, but notice that object B references object C, which is also allocated onto the heap. The next object pointer is now set to the top of object C, and the process can begin again. Using this simple mechanism, .NET maintains a heap of consecutive objects. The black arrows are root references. The yellow arrow represents a child reference pointed to by one of our own classes, as well as the stack Root references can be held within globals, within statics, and the CPU registers. .NET assumes that any object that has a root reference is still in use by the application. When an object is no longer in use, it loses its root reference. Here, object A and B lose their root references when the function allocates and finishes. A and B are now rootless, but so is C. Because C is pointed to by object B, it hasn't actually got a root reference, and so it's rootless as well. .NET will treat all rootless objects as garbage that needs to be collected. .NET uses a piece of functionality called the garbage collector that's in charge of reclaiming the memory used by rootless objects. The garbage collector runs whenever the memory used by the heap reaches certain thresholds. It identifies all rooted objects, which are those with a direct root reference or an ancestor with one, and then compacts the heap by copying the rooted objects over the rootless ones. An important point to remember is that when the garbage collector runs, all executing threads are suspended. Every garbage collection will hit the performance of your application to some extent. When the garbage collector runs, it will create a list of objects that ultimately have a root reference, and then it will copy the rooted objects over the rootless ones. Thus, the heap is compacted, and the memory from the rootless object is ultimately reclaimed. On the screen, objects A, B, and C are rootless, and so when the garbage collector runs, it will copy objects D and E over the top of objects A, B, and C, and reset the next object pointer. And that's what we'll now see. The garbage collector runs. It identifies A, B, and C as rootless, and copies D and E over them, and now resets the next object pointer. Garbage collection finishes, and we're now ready to allocate the new objects.